I'm going to guess that maybe because I was a, a speaker of Navajo, maybe that's why I retain, retained kindergarten. And then I went to the local boarding school because the gospel mission had closed down. And so um, Rocky Ridge Boarding School is where I attended from first grade all the way until eighth grade. Um, from there, I continued my uh, educational journey, my schooling journey um, in, into Flagstaff High School. And then from there um, is here on the slide. Um, I went to Danette College where I earned an Associates of Arts and Navajo Language. And the reason I did that is while I was attending high school, uh, in the border town of Flagstaff, uh, I was getting a lot of feedback aides that were at the Kintana border town dormitory that I was a good Navajo language speaker. And then in my Navajo language class at Flagstaff High School, for a moment there, I co-taught with um, some of my high school teachers. And so I remember, you know, being embraced by being a bilingual speaker really motivated me to um, continue my education, my educational journey, um, as far as, you know, learning more about myself, as well as um, learning more about Navajo language. So then I went back to school, I worked for a bit at the chapter house in Hard Rock. And that's where I learned, um, I, I increased my Navajo speaking skills, um, I had to help community members, um, whether it was just providing basic service or filling out applications or reporting at the chapter meetings about the funding and what where, where the funding was coming from, how to allocate and to budget them. So that's where I learned um, more Navajo language. Um, so then I went back to school to Northern Arizona University where I got a Bachelor's of Arts in Applied Indigenous Studies. And then... Um, I uh, finished there, and then later on, I got a job here at Pinyon Unified School District. At the time, I was a healthy living program coordinator, um, and then after that, I left for a while. Um, but while I was still here working, I went to pursue a master's in education in bilingual multi multicultural education, and um, that experience really helped me understand how to teach language to language learners. And language learners could be of any age. They could be like infants all the way to adults who don't speak the language. So um, I really credit uh, a course there I took with Jenny DeGroat, and she really taught us how to um, teach second language learners. Now I am currently at the University of New Mexico as part of the Diné Language Teacher Institute cohort, and I'm learning so much as well. I am in this program. I am specifically learning from indigenous um, scholars who are also considered, you know, language activists and are also doing language revitalization work and they are uh, majority Navajo and part other tribes. So I'm really thankful for that. So why is it important to speak your heritage language? What could be so important um, about speaking um, your heritage language? In this case, I'm using heritage language instead of Navajo language, just because um, this is, as I was doing this, um, this could apply to any indigenous language group, this specific slide. So, as a heritage language speaker, you begin to obtain a deeper understanding of yourself and your purpose in this world, in this life. And so, in speaking in a, especially an indigenous language, you, all those uh, worldviews and um, are a little bit clear um, when they begin to teach you in, in the language. And a lot of it, or one example is, you know, waking up in the morning. What does that mean? Um, waking up to the sun, um, getting up early, maybe doing a morning run, offering a morning prayer, and then um, providing a meal for your family, consuming that meal. You know, that whole process in itself comes with the language. When you speak the language, you understand that thinking in, in that language. You're able to understand how you're connected to people in your family community, and even to the larger natural environment. As Indigenous language speakers or heritage language speakers, um, we are able to make those connections. In the Western, um, the Western 
world, I guess, is, um, you know, there's a little bit of shame in being an elder or getting older. Um, we have, and, and we kind of also inherit those um, beliefs when we, when we grow up with a Western frame of mind or when we want to just speak English. And, you know, that comes with a whole lifestyle and a way of thinking. And so in that sense, um, you know, we're afraid or we're, um, we don't want to age too quickly. You know, becoming a grandma is somewhat or maybe a grandpa it's like no way that's too soon you know as as a young person but in a navajo sense in a navajo worldview um we are born into this world a grandmother an own uh, a grandmother an auntie uh like a maternal or paternal aunt also a uh, a paternal grandmother and then a mother so those are some of the um kinship terms that we are already as an infant born into this world as so if you're if you acknowledge your clans and how your kinship clan system works then at a very young age at birth you could be somebody's grandmother you could be somebody's grandfather you could be somebody's um you know paternal or maternal um aunt or uncle so that's how you know the uh, the worldview is is different, and you begin to understand more of that uh, when you speak the language. Your everyday actions and behaviors and view of the world are molded by your heritage language. Again, how you view the world um, in in this day and age, you know, we have, you know, the Western world where we're learning how to speak English. It's very part of our schooling, everyday schooling that we attend, especially here, out here. Um, and then we also have our connections to um, the place where we live, to our grandparents, to our older um, adults, and how they um, um, how they want us to continue on in into this life. And so every day, our actions and our behaviors, uh, whether you know if you see a rude person. Um, and you look at them very funny and you're like, or you know, those terms like, what are they doing? What are they saying in Navajo kind of reinforces that, you know, you are accountable for your behaviors and your actions and that you treat others with respect. So those type of teachings come in, in, in learning a language. Your personal health and well-being is associated with how you view wellness in your heritage language. Again, um, just the word um, happiness um, has a whole um, model, I guess, framed around it. Um, you, you learn some of that in your Navajo language classes as far as, you know, what does the East mean? Um, getting up at dawn, um, thinking about your day, and then going onwards to the south where you begin to plan your day and how you're going to proceed your day. And then, I mean, um, yeah, to the south and then to the west, um, how you're going to conclude your day and then to the north, how you're going to reflect upon your day. So those type of teachings and that type of understanding comes, you know, when you are, you really understand the, the language. And it, it's, a, it's a completely broader than that and more intricate, but I'm just kind of sharing a little bit of examples. Um, your, your heritage language will guide you to achieve your future goals. Um, what is it? What is your goal? If it's um, and how do you achieve that? Do you achieve that through prayer? Are you achieving that through learning songs? Are you achieving that through ceremonies, or just learning? You know what your purpose is here uh, on this earth and that journey that you should take. You know to to achieve those goals. And a lot of that, um, there's a lot of different teachings within our oral stories um, that kind of help facilitate or that kind of help guide you through that whole process. Um, you are, as a Navajo person, you embody the Diyindana as teaching. So um, I think in a, in, a, in a Navajo sense that um, we were placed on this earth as holy people. So in, in the, um, I'm trying to not sound a little bit too funny, but in English, we are the earth's surface holy people. So we take care of this place. 
we are the holy people of this earth and how we take care of it and the relationship that we establish with the earth and with ourselves and with each other is how um, it is, is what we were made um, is the other holy people made us that way, I guess. It's so hard to, to talk about this. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you understand what I'm saying. So how can we as language speaker, myself as a language speaker, um, how can I support you as a language learner? Here are just some strategies and some tips that I've gathered um, through different um, workshops and activities and research. So how do we support language learner? If you're learning your language, and I also consider myself as a language learner, I do have a little a difficult time uh, speaking um, Navajo, and it is pretty evident if you if a fluent speaker was around me, they would know that I'm a, also a language learner. So what does our journey look like? Um, we should be learning by doing, so it should be hands-on. So if I say like, di da, di um, ahue, ahue shandi ka ha, ahue shandi ka, you know. So learning by doing, it's hands-on. Ado la, hala aki be jish i wuta, di ki it ao, di da be ka chit so it's very, you know, hands-on. Um, there's an intergenerational learning that should occur, bringing fluent speakers together with learners where language can be heard and used. Again, fluent speakers, um, depending on where you are located and how what kind of access you have to speakers, um, like, for instance, in my home, it's myself and my two young boys. So I'm the speaker. And then I help guide my boys and my younger boys in trying to learn the language. So, um, but when my, you know, when their grandmother comes or when their grandfather comes, that's the intergenerational learning that should occur. Experiential learning, um, you experience it, you do it, and then you reflect. Um, and then the one-to-one -one mentoring, extra learning support to accommodate special needs, um, time, or skill development. Again, as a language speaker, we need to be, be able to provide the time and, and be able to have the patience to help develop the language for the language learner. Um, collaborative learning by providing sharing and support opportunities and then being consistent, um, consistent use of the language by speakers so learners can hear, observe um, how speakers use the language. So really paying attention as a language learner, paying attention to the sounds and how uh, language speakers are using, you know, facial expressions or gestures and um, really listening and observing how they are using language, whether it's in an everyday setting, whether it's in a presentation, whether it's in a chapter meeting, you know, all that makes a difference in learning a language. So what, was, what must we speakers do? And this could also apply to language teachers here at the school. We must communicate with adjusting, um, adjusting our language for our learners. So in this case, um, this would be an example of I wouldn't be able, like I wouldn't. I see uh So we really have to adjust D D So making those adjustments and um, for language learners. Create positive language learner environments. Um, learners take ownership. And then planning interactive activity, activities where learner where the learner interest is high. And then it is important to enunciate, model, and demonstrate. So a lot of you know facial expression, using gestures, um, you know, chunking the language where it's comprehensible for the learners. So language learner success, um, leave English behind. Uh, make yourself understood with nonverbal communication and then teach in full sentences, aim for real communication in your language. Language is also culture, and this is important because sometimes we, we seem to separate the two. Um, so in this sense, uh, like if you say, 
the difference between younger brother and older brother, there's two different terms. That is the culture of the language. Um, also, like the, even using the word, the term uh, it's been applied to as friends now in like a contemporary context. Friends, janigo but no, chikis is more, you know, gender related. I can only say chikis to my sisters or to my female, my female cousins, um, cousin, but I cannot say that to uh, a male relative, um, like a, my, like one of my brothers. Um, so those, um, that is the culture within the language. Um, and then also as well as the cultural practices. So you cannot separate the two. Focus on listening and speaking. Again, listening. Speaking. Those are really important. Um, focusing on listening and speaking to hear how language is produced, what are the sounds like, what is it sound, what is it, what is fluency sound like, and then as well as learning how to use the language in a, you know, in specific contexts. Um, learn and teach language through activities. I really enjoy doing this. Um, uh, if you have participated in the second quarter for the middle school, I was able to teach a class um, Navajo language class, I, you know, I really enjoyed myself and I hope you all did too. We did a lot of um, total physical response. I used a lot of gestures. I repeated a lot. Um, and I actually also had, um, you know, peer to peer interactions and using questioning, questioning and responding. Um, to specific questions. So we did a lot of that. And it was through the activities as well as using Jamboard and then Kahoot and other, you know, technology apps. Because we're in a dis distance learning setting, that's how we used it. But in an in-classroom setting, what that could look like is, you know, doing a cooking demonstration and having the students follow along or, you know, making, doing some type of craft or just some type of activity where it's hands-on. Um, Using audio taping and videotaping, again, those are very important, especially if you don't have access to speakers. So if you're a language learner and you want to mo know more about how to, um, how to speak the language or even just to listen to the language to see if you can capture a few words, audio taping and videotaping is really, really important. Um, be an active learner and then be sensitive to each other's needs. Be patient and proud of each other and yourself. So doing a lot of those positive affirmations. Ah, oh, 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 oh. So just being very energetic and positive about the whole experience. Um, so language learning in the home. Let's talk about or let me share with you some of um, a few things that I do within my own home. And then I'm sure some of you all do this within your own home as well. But um, the more that language learners hear certain words and phrases. Um, so in this case, I, I like to use this because um, it really brings back memories when my, my younger brother was here at Pinyon Community School in the dormitory. He used to, a lot of his friends were fluent speakers and he was not, he was a, uh, he was language. I mean, he was very limited on his Navajo. So he would come home and ask my mom, what does this mean? What does this mean? And he would use all the words and the phrases that his friends use consistently. And so he, that's what he would hear all the time. And he would ask my parents, what does this mean? What my friends say this. And so that's how he picked up a lot of um, language from his peers. So where can we hear language, especially in this time of COVID where we are doing social distancing? Um, we don't make, we, maybe some of us are not visiting our fluent speakers um, or some of our relatives who speak more Navajo, who are more patient to work with us. Maybe we're not visiting them at this time. Well, um, well, okay. Before COVID, it would have been, you know, ceremonies and then you know, like in-person chapter meetings. But um, through like social media and through the advancement of technology, the chapter meetings, I've seen some that have been virtual. Um, and so you can hear 
um, the chapter officials speaking in, in, in the language at those meetings. As well as the radio station, I personally listen to KTNN in the morning time. And if I had access to KNDN, I would. Um, that's a radio station out of Farmington. But th these are some of the places you can hear it. Um, I also follow the Navajo Nation Council um, Facebook page. Oops, let me write Facebook page on here. I'm making edits as I'm presenting. <laughs> um, there at their at their committee meetings and council sessions, that's where you will hear um, a lot of the language spoken, a lot of the questions and answers in, in, in the net. And then from our monolingual speakers, um, if you have access to monolingual speakers, again, you're put in a situation where you're forced to speak the language. And then grocery stores and gas stations. I have two nieces who are working at um, a, a local uh, gas station in in our community community and some of the terms that they have to to, to learn is like how to count money um, they have to say like you know questions like that and phrases that 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 um, monolingual speakers when they come into the store they have to learn those phrases and those words um, so that they can communicate with those speakers and or else they'll say like you know or and you know those type of phrases and then i've seen some tiktok videos that um where some navajo language um some people are um, using Navajo language to make TikTok videos. And some of them are very hilarious and some of them are, you know, it's uh, really neat to, to see and to hear. So how do we begin, whoops, how do we begin in the home? Language speakers can use heritage language for daily, daily routines, chores, eating, and much more. So as a speaker, as a mother, a manashiga on lehawada, Wake up, Janil. Wake up or get up. You know, it's morning time or whatever. You know, um, typically I will ask my, my boys, you know, to brush your teeth. Nikke we we live in a one room home so namasi um, get me some water, So using these phrases, whether um, you are a speaker or maybe you are a language learner, you can begin with some of these, you know, phrases part of the, your morning or evening routine, you know, the daily routines that you do within your home. Um, that is where the, the natural development of language should occur. And again, um, waking up, you know, brushing your teeth, washing your face, getting dressed, putting your shoes on, peeling the potatoes, cooking, eating, and then, you know, maybe you're thirsty, you want to get some water. So those phrases that are associated with those routines, so language speakers require language, um, should require language learners to respond in the language through questioning. Oops, I don't know why I put a question mark there, but let me fix that. Um, so through questioning. So language speaker, as a speaker in my own home, I tell my kids 
um, no. And then I ask follow up. That no That no And then what I expect from my kids, uh, because they understand the language, but they're they're um, they're slow or they're not producing the language. As a language speaker, I have to guide that process. So that no and then my son will respond, yes, I brush my teeth. The neck at Uh and then then I help him. Oh shawo yich is the ne. Oh shawo yich is the ne. And then he'll say, Oh shawo yich is or if they haven't brushed their teeth, so if I ask that no washing is, and then he goes, "No, I haven't brushed my teeth yet." In English, they respond in English. Then I go, um, um, using complete sentences to make my kids respond, and then I repeat it several times until they respond to me. Um, Doing that with language learner in, in my own home with my kids, it um, it takes several times before it's automatic, before they start depending on me to um, develop the sentence, the response back for them. So uh, if I say now, if I say, and then my son will say, oh, that's what he'll say, if he brushes his teeth. <laughs> okay, continuing on. Language speakers, um, re oh, this is the same slide. I mean, the same, I don't know why I have a question. I apologize for this here. But um, again, here's another example. Um, chij, chij. So, didi gi kwa ki e chij ta, didi e kon ta. Ako, da chij, da chij. Da chij sa nden ja, da chij sa nden ja. That would be a question I would ask to my kids. And then they would say, one, maybe the younger one might say, um, no, I haven't yet. And then I would tell him, or if they did, they would say, oh, and then I have as a speaker, I model that response. So if I if I ask that and then they say yes in English, then I say, oh Oh Then they'll say, Oh You know, that that's how they would respond. Um, the last example here is um Sorry, I'm making my edits here. <laughs> um, asking again in my house or at my home, what is it like? In this case, if you're listening to the, I mean, if you're observing the slides and you're looking at the questions and you're looking at the visual cues here, um, then you know that in my home, there are some chores that my children have to do and there are some, you know, animals to feed. So in this case, that's the language that I use to, um, to in, in my home. Again, a more natural approach about daily routines, what, what happens within your home and how do you um, establish, um, how do you, how do you get your language learners to begin using those words and phrases? So here is another question. Then they'll say, yes. And I say, yes is, oh, that's when I, I cue them, say it. And then sometimes it's funny because they'll say, oh, <laughs> but um, the more that you repeat as a language learner, um, any opportunities to repeat someone who is a speaker, whether you're, um, you're correct or not, really helps and develops your, um, your language 
proficiency. So I just wanted to share a little bit of tips um, and how you can, as a language learner, can begin to um, start out small, using small phrases, small words, and then using daily routines within your home, maybe within a school setting, whatever, you know, the normal setting that you're in, beginning to learn those words and phrases and then um, learning how to respond using those words and phrases if you know a language speaker was a was was um was able to or if they were if they had asked you a question like if they had asked you did you eat and then your response would be oh or the you know um learning how to respond or asking for guidance how do i respond to you when i say this um I have also some friends who are not very proficient Navajo language speakers. Um, they're at maybe maybe like at an intermediate level. Um, so they will sometimes give me a call and ask, how do I say this in Navajo? So one of the questions I have them say is, or this is the way I want you to ask me. I tell them this is from here on out. I don't want you to ask me, um, how do I say this in Navajo? So, like, if they want to learn how to say uh, pin, and they say, how do I say pin in Navajo? And I tell them, this is how I want you to ask me. You're going to ask me, pin So, that how do I say it? How do I say it? So you can use the English term for the item that you're asking about, but I want you to ask like, cup, hashit egobejni. Hmm. Naltos, hashit egobejni. Mouse, hashit egobejni. Bracelet, hashit egobejni. So that's how I want you to ask me. And so they will ask and then I respond. Um, and so some of our messages is through um, Messenger or Instagram where you can actually record an audio message and then we send that back and forth. So there's different multiple ways you can um, practice and become more proficient in the language. So All right. Thank you, Valencia, for that presentation. It was really great information. Um, we're going to uh, take a minute to do a spin of the wheel um, to see if we can get another winner. Um, and we're going to do two more spins. And so if you're watching on Facebook Live um, and you haven't put your name um, into the Facebook Live, go ahead and do that. We're going to do some more sessions as we go along. Um, but let me go ahead and share my screen. Let's spin of the wheel. We can get everybody on there. Okay. And here we go. We're All right. Let's see. Yay. Yay. Okay. One more. All righty. Um, now I need everybody to um, get a pencil and paper, and we're going to try to have a little uh, break, a five minute break with a drawing. So uh, um, we're going to practice drawing some cartoons, and Miss James, the art teacher from Pinion High School, is going to help us. So I'll give you a second to find piece of paper, pencil, crayon, eyeliner, whatever works. Um, and we're gonna just do a quick little drawing exercise. It'll be a lot of fun. All right, so let me switch over to that video for us here. And go. Hi everybody, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about some 10 minute cartoon faces. Now, really, is this gonna take you 10 minutes? Maybe not, but maybe you'll decide to do a little bit more with it. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask the question, 
How do cartoon artists make so many different cartoon faces and they all look so different? Very easy answer. They change the face shape and they change the face features. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to draw a couple of cartoons. You can draw your own. You can draw along on another sheet of paper if you'd like to. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start out with guidelines. With every face, we know that a face is symmetrical. It can be divided in half. And we can put in a place up here to put in a little bit of guidelines. I'm going to put the eyes just above that line. So I'm going to start out and I'm going to put in little cut apple eyes. It's like if you were to cut an apple open, you'd see the little seeds of the apple. That's why they're called cut apple eyes. Give them some eyebrows, little ears on the side of the head. This one here, I'm going to give him a big, long nose. And then I think I'll give him a fun little mustache and a great big smile. Maybe even let some of his teeth show down on here. Okay, so there's my first guy. Oh no, he's bald. We better add a little bit of hair. Go up the sides here. Go up the sides here. We'll give him a couple little funny hairs up on top of his head. For this next one, let's change it. We're going to have more of a short, squat looking face, but we're still going to use those guidelines. This one, we're going to put some glasses on there. Those glasses are going to go off to the side, right over the ear. Little eyebrows again. This time, a little round nose. Big curvy smile. This one we're going to give kind of some big hair. And bring that down into the neck. Almost kind of looks like, um, she almost have like little gray hair and be a little grandma up there. This next one is more of a diamond shape. Once again, we'll still go through, we'll use those guidelines. This one, let's take these eyes, let's shape a little bit differently. Let's kind of give her some eyelashes. This one's going to be a young lady. We'll give her a cute little pointy nose. And to make her look all fancy, we'll give her some big old lipstick. Some earrings, maybe. I like those big hoop earrings. And I think we'll give her a little bit of hair that kind of comes down, maybe around her face. Kind of like that. Okay, we could even go through and give her some pearls. Fancy necklace still on her. Okay, a little bit different. Next one, we've got a diamond shape. Hmm, I'm not so sure what to do with this diamond shape one. Let's try changing those eyes, or the line, so it goes a little more to the side. Still using that guideline. This one will make big old ping pong eyes. Pointy nose. And maybe on this one, should we make that face, the mouth open a little bit? Give him some teeth. This time we're only going to see one ear on the side, and let's do some curly hair. Kind of like that. A little bit different every time. We can even give this guy a little bow tie. All right, one more to go. Once again, we're always constantly changing the features, the eyes, the nose, the mouth. Okay, so on this one, hmm, let's make these eyes really tall. Make one kind of like this, one a little shorter. Make this one really goofy. And what kind of smile should we give this one? Should we give them, I kind of want to give them another mustache. Maybe we should kind of give them kind of a, I don't know for sure what's going on kind of look. Make those a little darker. And we can go up the side again with the hair. And we'll just make the hair kind of all go over the top this time. 
there. So there are five different cartoons, five different face shapes, and they all have different face features. So why don't you give it a try? Have all right, Miss James, thank you. Does anybody want to show up on their on their camera what they made? Here's mine. I'll be brave. She made me look like I know what I'm doing. She did a good job in showing us. Anybody else try it? Do I want to put it up to the camera? Let's see. All right, Cass, I got you. Mr. Jo Sergeant Jones, I got you. Nice job. Look, we all look so good. We're so fabulous artists. We didn't even know. Thanks to Miss James. Sounds good. Ellery, thank you. That looks nice. Evelyn, let me see yours again. That looks good. Kyra, nice. Wow. We got some real artists here. Nice job. Okay. Well, thank you, Miss James, for that fun project that we could all do in just five minutes. Good skills. All right. We're now going to go ahead and switch over to Miss Rachel Denny. She's the um, Pinion Accelerated Middle School Assistant Principal, Athletic Director, everything really. Um, we all know how much that she does for the school here and we appreciate it. And she has a great presentation about living in a digital environment and it's pretty fun. So we're going to go ahead and switch back over here and let's watch her presentation. Hello, my name is Rachel Denny. I'm a maternal house born for the Tango Clan. My maternal clan is Bitter Water, and my paternal clan is Mini Goats. I'm originally from Lone Mountain, but was raised here in Pinyon. I am Pinyon Accelerated Middle School Assistant Principal. I attended Pinyon Elementary, Middle, and High School here in Pinyon. I was here when the school transitioned from minors to eagles. I married with three children a third grader, a fifth grader, and a college student. My educational background, of course, an alumni here from Pinyon High School. I received my BA in physical education from University of New Mexico. I received my master's in educational leadership from Northern Arizona University. I've been with um, Pinyon Unified School District for five years as a teacher, dean of students, athletic director, and currently an assistant principal. So the way, how I wanted to start my presentation and to kind of like show you what it's about, I'm going to ask you a few questions. If you answer yes to any of these questions, then I say you're in the right, and you're in the right session. Do you have a cell phone? Mm, yes. Do you have a laptop, tablet, PC, any type of digital device? If you said yes, yes, and yes, then yeah. Do you have any social media accounts? Mm, I would say yes. Do you have any gaming system of any kind? Mm, I'm pretty sure that most kids do, so yes. Do you game online, on your phone, on your tablet, on your PC or anything? Um, yes, 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 yes. Do you download movies, games, music, any sort of apps? And when you download them, do you use like to text? Also, do you use texting, messaging calls, anything to communicate for those apps? If you said yes, 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 then yeah, you're in the right session because my presentation is on surviving in a digital environment. And what that means is, let me just give you a small glimpse of how I grew up, and probably your aunt, your uncle, your mom, your dad, even your grandparents. Because when we were back in the day, this was our gaming system. This is what my parents first bought me, or how I first played at my cousin's house. You know how you invite your friends over? This is how we play. And we had to take turns because we could, and we had to be physically there to play. So we also had, you know, of course, the Walkman. Everybody had that. If you were cool, if you were awesome, this is what you had. And, of course, you had your cassette play, cassette tapes with you, and one cassette tape is one album. And later on, if you had a boom box and it had two cassette players on there, you would run over there, record, record a song from the radio, or you would record different songs, and that's how we created our playlist. We also had the VCR and the old TV, and then those TV had to switch the channels by hand sometimes. And of course, you also had your stack of videos, all different types, all different kinds, and you would have to rent them and everything. And you also had the CD player. Once the Walkman was there, the next came the CD player. And of course, with the CD players, you had all your CDs, and if you had an away game, or if you want to borrow a CD, one CD was one whole album. Again, we couldn't really create playlists till later on. So we had to, if you want to change a song to a different one, you had to take out the whole thing. Make sure you don't scratch it, because once you scratch it, you're 
and your CD is pretty much done. You have to haul around your batteries and everything. Now, this was our satellite dishes. You're probably like, what the heck, what is that? That used to be outside your house, and if you want to change from this to that or any station, and the satellite had to rotate all the way around, this was what it was. So if you had this in your house, you were pretty cool because you probably had a lot of channels to watch. Then you had your um, phones right in front of bashes. There used to be like four, four telephones like this. You had to have your quarters, your nickels, your all that stuff just so you can make, make a phone call. That transition to all these different types of phones. I probably, out of the phones that are, you see here, I'd say I probably only had like maybe three of these phones. But now you see all of this. This is a change. This is all a change that we went through when we were younger. And even at this pace, my parents would be like, what are you doing? Get off the game. Put your CD player away. Turn off the, are you going to put your, turn off the VCR? But nowadays, us as parents, your grandparents and everyone, your aunt, your uncle, and even probably like your teachers, everyone else. This is what we have at the house now. It's everything in one, the smart TVs on your your, hell, your handheld devices, anything. You have your, all those movies, all the Disney movies, all your Netflix, Hulu, everything is on a smart TV. You don't need shelves of movies. You don't need stacks of VCRs. You don't need piles of CDs. You don't need piles and piles of cassette players. If you want to make a playlist, you download Spotify, YouTube, all these different ones that you need for your music. Everything is right there, literally. And I would say that everybody mostly has um, a smart TV in each of their rooms. At each household has a room. Each gaming console has its own TV. And you have a computer and everything. Now, how do you survive in that digital age? Things are coming at you pretty fast. And to kind of give you a background of what it was like we thought it would be, if you kind of that makes sense, it is back in 1962 and back in the 80s, this was our Saturday morning cartoon, The Jetsons. It was first aired in 1962 and it was kind of set 100 years in the future, which would be like 2062. But 59 years later, we see it already. You see George Jetson, Judy, Jane, and Elroy. They have already their smart TV, their video conferencing. Elroy's already on distance learning, and you see the doctors through them. You see all this already. You see the smart watches. You see robots cleaning. You see um, your news coming through on a flat screen, and you don't even have to go anywhere. And the remote work is there. Uh, George just had to just go down and over, and he was already at work. So you see this already with the times and the change. And when I was small and I'd be like, oh my gosh, that, that's so awesome and everything. And you're like, right, it's here already. And with that said, and I don't need to tell you and review all these facts because you see it already. You see the text messaging that you get is increasing, whether it's from your friends, family, school, or anything. You see you get more phone calls. Your parents get more phone calls from the school. I probably call most of your parents too. You see all that. You see more calls from your family. You see more calls anywhere. Social media has increased. You see everything on social media. We have social media from the school. We have Facebook. We try to do everything we can. There's people posting. There's um, even the whole industry of buying, buying, buying has changed. When you look at your Snapchat, there's commercials. When you look at TikTok, there's commercials. There's everywhere. Everybody had to change video chatting, conference, even this conference. We could do it in person, but of course, of course, of what happened, it's changed. And even with the messenger apps, so many different types of messenger apps are out there for school, for social media, for conferences, for anything. Some are free. Some you have to download. Some you have to pay extra to get the different types. And then you have emails have increased from your teachers, from businesses, from everywhere. So I don't need to tell you all these facts because you see it around you already with your parents, with yourself, with the school. And every time you you're, you get a notification, it's from the school. So your teacher made a new assignment. Your teacher graded your assignment. There's an announcement. There's these things that are always coming at you. At the same time, your friends want to stream. They want to play with you. They want to get go live. They want you. They're texting you. Hey, this is what's coming on TikTok. Hey, watch this new YouTube video. Hey, all these things are coming at you. And it's like, sometimes it can be overwhelming. Even the most downloaded apps of 2020, Zoom is number one. Number 19 is Google Meets. But if you see in between, I bet you a lot of you have these apps. If we were to go through all of these and everything, I think that mostly everybody has it. Hey, even myself, 
out of the 19 here, I have 17 of them download on my phone. So I would not present anything that I had not had experience with. And I can tell you that I've had 17 of these, but also my kids have these downloaded on their tablets, on their phones, and everything. They have Zoom, they have Google Meets, they have Spotify, they have YouTube, they have Disney Plus and everything. But just because of the convenience, just because we also build family time and everything else around it. So with that said, I want to show you that we also have educational apps that are downloaded on our tablets, on our phone, on our computers, everywhere. We have Google Classroom here at the school that all three school buildings use. We have Zoom and ta-da, here we are with Zoom, video conferences, parent-teacher conference, report cards, anything that we need is through, um, any meetings here that we have here at the school too is through Zoom. We use Remind apps to remind parents, to remind you, this is due, when is it due, how are you doing and everything. Some of our classroom have Class Dojo. I've seen it at the elementary, so kudos to elementary for letting me know because it does tell you what your kids are doing and everything. We also use it here at the school. We also have Flipgrid where we're trying to make lessons more engaging. So instead of the regular props, what do you think, everything, kids can make simple presentations, simple videos, anything just to let us know how everything's going with everything. And of course, the number one thing that every child should have here download is the PowerSchool app. This app is very good, very useful. Hint, hint, if you need help downloading it or getting your username or password as a student and as a parent or guardian, let us know. We're here to help you. We also have your Google Meets, you know, the waffle down at the bottom. And then with that, you have also some classes, class sessions with Google Meets. You do your presentation, you attend class, your live session, your tutoring, all these things. So most of these, like I said, I downloaded, my kids have, and I'm sure you also download it. If not, hint, hint, you should download some of these ones here that we have at the school. With that said, how does the digital environment impact us? How, what, when, where, why? And why is it that Miss Denny, Miss Denny is presenting on this to us as students? Well, let me tell you why. Because sometimes you get overwhelmed, even with school, your, your live session, your online packets. Are you online? Are you on paper packets? Are you, got, you got promotions coming up. You got to get to the next grade level. And as seniors, your graduation is coming up. Do you have enough credits? How are you going to try to get your grades and get your grades up, your, your assignments and everything? So you have your regular tutoring session with everybody on there. And you're trying to listen. You're trying to do what you can. And at the same time, you have all these teachers trying to send you links, send you tutoring links, send you all these things. And you're like, OK, what do I need to do? How do I need to adjust this? This is too much. I'm told to go to this class, that class at this time, but I assist so much. And then that also impacts your health. The digitally, you have everything in front of you, like I said. You don't have to get up as much just to change the channels. You can do it from your phone. You can check your email. You can make a phone call. You can even turn on your flashlight. You can take a picture from your phone. All that stuff is there. And with everything that happened a year ago to now, literally a year ago to now, to how everything's going, it's like, don't go outside, don't do this. So we're more based on at home, where we're just at the comfort of home, on your couch, on the chairs, on whatever you're at, maybe on bed, just hanging out. We are not doing our physical fitness as much. We're not getting out there. We're not eating how we're supposed to. And that can impact us when you're sitting in front of the computer. The more you sit in front of your computer, your laptop, or just behind your bed, you know, you do your, oh, those ones and everything. At the same time, with your cultural teachings and your background, you have so many digital apps, you have so many things, whether it's on YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, or anything. Every time you open it, even with your music, your influencers, everything telling you, be this, watch that, listen to this, dress like this, act like this, and everything. And sometimes you kind of get bombarded with all those because it's so new. You can open TikTok and you can look at somebody's video all the way from Tokyo, from Beijing, from Australia, from Spain, New York, all these different places. And you're like, I want to go in there. I want to be that. I want to see this. I want to be all that stuff. But then at the same time, you may forget where your background, your peer, your the teachings, the values, your culture, who you are, where you come from, everything. Because that even that can impact it, which goes back straight to your family values, your core beliefs, and everything. With your family, your parents trying to tell you to do your chores, trying to tell you, like, hey, get off the Wi-Fi. I'm turning off the Wi-Fi. Nobody does their chores. 
everything, the support of the family right there, and then the communication. So, and you have your phone, you have your tablet, you have everything in front of you, and then what? Guess maybe you get behind on your chores. Maybe you're not cleaning your room. You're not feeding your horses. You're not helping as much as you're supposed to. And then you're just kind of just kicking back. And then that's when sometimes your mom, your dad, your grandma, your grandpa, somebody might get mad at you and say, well, back in the day, we didn't have these. It's not yet. These ain't a shot quick ain't And then you're like, yeah, grandma, yeah, mom, I know. Well, you know what? Now, times are changing everything. Yeah, times are changing. We understand that. You know what? Because like I said, I would not present to you something that I did not understand. Because guess what? I said that. I said, hey, you know what? It's time to turn off that technology. It's time to start off. Turn off this. Get your room clean. Everything. Put your phone down. Put it away. It's dinner time. Things like that. So with that, and then it also affects your friends. When you're gaming, friends, look, the most time students and teenagers are on their gaming. As I would say, it is at night. Streaming, playing with your games. On your social media, the first thing you do, check what is going on. Hey, good morning. And all these stuff and you're texting and your phone calls and everything. Social media, did you see that post? Yeah, I saw that post. I can't believe that. Yeah, you know what? Did you see that? Yeah, we should try it. And all these stuff that go on and then it goes up. You have all your friends helping you. Like I said, back in the day, your cousin or whoever had to physically come over so you could play a game, so you could do all these things but now with the digital world you can play with your friends like in the middle of the night or early in the morning right there on your phone playing i'm just saying that because i do that but there's a time and place for that and we'll talk about that so you can play with your friends no matter if they're here there or anywhere you can say play you can play with them and that can kind of like have an impact on your social too but we'll go over that thing too and then with your goals being on social media, hanging out with your friends, staying late at night, doing all these things, you can get behind on your work. And you're you're probably like, oh, I have a week. A week goes by, two weeks go by, three weeks go by. And then sooner or later, you're behind. You're behind on your packets. You're behind on your online work. You get confused. You get upset and everything like that. And sooner or later, it starts <clears throat> impacting your grades. Impacting your grades can also impact either your graduation or promotion. So how do you deal with all these things? How do you make sure that you're doing what you need to and not get overwhelmed, not get frustrated, not giving up, not just getting upset? How do you cope with all these things, with all these things coming at you? So that's a time to reflect and stop getting your priorities, what you need to do, how you need to um, Put things in order, what you need to get done just so that you can be you. So even with your school, the first thing I would do is create a schedule. And that's what I've done with my kids. Yes, even my college student has a schedule. Getting up in the morning just as you would if you were coming into the building or just as he would if he was on campus. Getting up, getting ready, get your laptops out, get your paper packets out, make sure your phone, anybody that is there, communicate with the school. If you need help, if you need anything, make sure you have a phone number ready to call your teachers. Call someone, call me to tell, ask me, when is my teacher here? How can I connect them so I can help you? There's three of us, you have a principal, assistant principal, and you have staff here at the school that are willing to help you. You just need to tell us that you need help, what you need help on, so we can get there. Downloading the educational apps. Make sure you have your Zoom. Make sure you have your Google Meet. Make sure your emails are ready to go. You're checking it daily. Yes, there's tons of it coming, but let me know if you need help on prioritizing those. Download the Power School app. Go to your tutoring session. Go to your live session as much as you may not want to. But when you say you're in class and checking in, you're telling us you're ready for that. So create your schedule. Download the Power School app. If you need help downloading that, let me know and I can help you here at the middle school. If you're at the elementary or high school, I can help you connect with people that can help you download these ones because we do have your username, we do have your password. Hint, hint, parents, if you need that, let us know, guardians too. And it's really helpful, really, really helpful. Find a tutoring session, get to work, stay on schedule and be consistent. Talk to your teachers, talk to a staff member, talk to one of our tutors here to help you. And then with your health, start, start. Any type of start, 
your goals, your fitness, everybody's different. And you know what? And that's what this makes the world great because everybody's different. You are you. You know what best fits you. You know your goals. You know what motivates you. If you it's your music, download a playlist. Get your earphones on. Eat and walk outside. But make sure it's, you, know, you have your safety in mind. And make sure your nutrition fits you. Everybody's different, like I said. So make sure you start. Um, any progress is no progress. And guess what? There are apps out there that can help you. Whether you're an Android or an iPhone, they have fitness um, apps and fitness things are already built in there. And if you have a watch or any type of smart watch, put it together. Use your apps and to help you get fit and actually be, again, start and do you best you, not somebody else. Okay, start somewhere. And then with your cultural values, be you. I know there's so much stuff out there that are awesome and cool and tell you to be them. Don't forget who you are and where you come from. Turn it off your, your cell phones. Turn off anything, just like for five minutes. Give your elders, your mom, your dad, anybody a story, anything. Just go back to who you are, where you are from. Because trust me, when you're given the microphone, when you're given a chance to introduce yourself, that's where you will, you will get the most support of who you are, where you come from, because that will be your strength. Trust me. And then my mom, my dad, my grandpa, everybody told me, and I'd be like, mm, okay, yeah, no, trust me. This is where what matters. Don't forget, okay? And then your family. How can you balance that with everything at Communicate? Like I said, the way we grew up with the digital environment is totally different than yours. You need to communicate with us. You need to communicate with your mom, your dad, your parents, everything on how it's changing, what you want to do. If you want them to show TikTok and what it is, show them. Show them what it is. Show them the funny videos. Show them the motivational videos. There's so many Native American influencers out there that are promoting their culture, their heritage, everything. There's also different ways to help you. And um, I have TikTok and I watch it too. Show them what it is. Show them how to use it, communicate. That bridge, you got to build that with your grandparents, your parents and everything. Show them how you can, you can use it. Respect their rules, their boundaries and their time. The only reason why they're doing that is to keep you safe, to teach you something, even though you think that you're like, yes, whatever. And if somebody tells you it's time to turn off, just respect that rules and boundaries and everything. So whether your family is in person, you're living with them in the household, or whether you're using your social media, Zoom, Google Meet, Snapchat, anything, and they're miles away and everything. And because of what's going on, use that for the better. Okay, so make sure... And with your friends, limit your social media, gaming, text, and everything. Make sure it's appropriate because you know how teenagers and kids can be. And then your gaming, limit those. Try to rest, R-E-S-T, rest as much as you can. Go to bed on time and everything. And last but not least, your goals. Anything you choose, any one of your goals, whether it's school, whether it's um, vocational tech, whether it's the military, any goals you choose, even from elementary to middle school to high school, anything, it's going to be tough. It's going to be hard, but be consistent. Any progress is no progress. Anything that you get, let us know. So we're here to help you. We have mentors here. We're here to help you, motivate you the way we can, but at the end, Trust me, the view is awesome. When you work hard, get where you need to get to, it's wonderful. So be you, watch where you watch what you put on social media. Don't be too influenced by anything. Watch your introduction. And we're here to help you. And with that said, from the school, this is our social media. This is how we're trying to connect with you. And this is how we're changing. A long time ago, trust me, it wasn't like this. We have our website, you have on the website, each school has their own links to their classroom, to their administration at each building, each teacher, everything. Use that, connect with us, let us know how we're doing. Download the Power School app, you, your parent, so you know where you're at. We also have Twitter, we also have our app. Go down to your Android or, or your iPhone and download the app so you know the announcements, what's going on. We also have Facebook, you have any comment, questions, let us know. I don't have a YouTube channel, but you know, I watch YouTube and I always want to do this. But you can like, subscribe, and follow us on YouTube too. 
And this is where you can see all our board meetings, everything. With that said, I want to say thank you. And I'm done with my presentation. And hopefully you stay till the end. But like I say, if you ever see me in person or if you ever came to my office for whatever reason, by the time you're done watching this video, by the time you're done looking at all the videos, it's really up to you what you take in and how you take it. But here at the school, we're here for you. We just want to help you all succeed. And hopefully you come back and be here where I'm at so that way you can try and help our community. And I would really appreciate it if you complete the survey. The link is down there. Tell us, tell me what you want to see presented. Tell us how we can help you better. Tell us what matters to you so we can try to let you know, get to know you, and that way we can try to support you more. The survey will close on Friday at 10 o'clock. And of course, I got drawings. So I'll draw some people that turn in some of the forms at 1030, whether you're a student here at the middle school, at the elementary, at the high school, or not even in the school district, and whether you're a parent. So if you have any questions, email me. It's down below. And those are the forms. These are my resources, and I thank you for attending the presentation. I know I kind of went a little bit over, but I really appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Miss Denny. Um, we will get her form link um, posted and um, so you'll have a chance to click on that in the chat box. Also, um, as she mentioned, we do have a YouTube channel for Pinion Unified School District. And after this uh, youth conference is finished, we are going to be posting a link to all of this presentation from nine o'clock this morning all the way to the end of the day on there. So if you want to go back or you missed part of it, um, that's great. Uh, we want to go ahead and move on to our next presenter, um, Mr. Kevin Boleyn, and he's here to talk to us a little bit about some more of the uh, Navajo cultural um, aspects. And um, I just wanna say for all of you still following along with the mystery letters, the next letter, second to last letter is S, S, so S. All right, Mr. Boleyn. Are you with us today? Yeah, I'm right here. Great, wonderful. Um, we'll go ahead and um, have you introduce yourself. I did mention a bit that you uh, are working with uh, Navajo Prep, but I know you have more that you can share with us. And so if you wanna start with an introduction, let everybody know about you and get started. Thank you so much. Okay, Viga, thank you. Um, let me go over this really quick. So I was asked to do, um, one, I think this was a similar presentation that somebody saw. I did this one with um, UNM, and it was how do we connect the hero twin story to our daily lives. And so, Navo Our cultural consultant design and collaborative so I'm from Crown Point and I, and I have a home in Waterflow, New Mexico. So that's where I'm coming in from. Okay. Bitter water. Hey, Miss Weaver. Okay. Tangled and Chishichirikawa. So that's who I am. I am a teacher with Naval Preparatory School. And that's where I do my work. Okay. So I don't think I have very much time. Um, let me get through as much as I can, okay? So, let's go talk about story structure really quick, okay? Um, because a lot of times people like to think that when we tell our stories in Navajo that they don't, that it's just somebody talking and talking and talking and talking and sometimes people may think that these stories don't have, um, don't measure up to like movies or epics or other stories like the odyssey or huck um was it uh, huckleberry finn and that was, what was his name those stories i'm trying to remember those, those books other books too but the stories that we tell are very complex okay so if you look right here there's harry potter there's star wars matrix lord of the rings finding nemo and so there's there's a way of storytelling you have your main hero Who's the hero of the story? So in Harry Potter, it's Harry Potter, right? Star Wars, it's Luke, and now it's Rey. In Matrix, it's Neo. In Finding Nemo, the main hero is Marlin, okay? Even though Nemo is part of it, I think there's two of them, but I think Marlin is the main hero. And then you have your main helper, right? The main person that helps you. 
Dumbledore, Morpheus, Gandalf. And so there's even the enemy or your, your monster. Voldemort, Darth Vader, Saruman, Darla, that cute little girl from um, Finding Nemo. She's the enemy in Finding Nemo. It's funny. But you see how there's these there's stories, right? There's parts of a story. And same thing right here. You guys probably seen this in school, elementary. You guys know the storyline, a story mountain, whatever you guys call it, right? So this is your background, rising, climax, fall, and action resolution, okay? So how do Navajo stories flow? And I think this is where a lot of teachers, um, <clears throat> they when, when, when we start to see the way our Navajo students write, you start to see them go off in one direction, and then they swing back to another direction. And then they turn back around and come back to what they were talking about. But then they go off on another tangent. And so working with some of the staff members, especially our, the, the ELA, the, the English um, language department here at PrEP, um, one of the teachers saw this and she says, and she said, wow, this is how our students write. And so in our stories, you start off with one little story right here at the very bottom. Way right here has the rising action, climax, falling action, then resolution. Then you keep going. Then another part of the story. Then another part. Then another part. Another, another. It keeps going till it completes an entire story. Okay. So does this make sense as to why um, um, sometimes our stories may seem complex or complicated? It's because it's telling a story within a story within a story. Okay. So ceremonies is really complex because you have a story within a story within a story within a story. Then it goes story within a story within a story within a story, within a, story a story within a story, and it keeps going all the way to the top. Okay. So this is how complex our storytelling is. Okay. Which is why it's really difficult for people to write books in Navajo with stories because it's so much information we're trying to give to you. Okay. So here's the story of the Hero Twins. And I'm sure you guys read stories about the Hero Twins, right? And we try to make storybooks for you guys, but we really make them short. But there's so much to it. Look at the birth of Changing Woman. Their mom was born. And then Changing Woman became a woman. Then there was the monsters. Then the birth of the hero twins, the childhood of the twins, the journey of the hero twins, the trials of the hero twins. And then they got their gifts and the weapons and then their final tests and then they returned to earth. And then there's the monsters that they fought. They fought 13 monsters. And then that's another story. And then they saved four monsters again. Remember old age, lies, um, uh, sleep and hunger, right? And then there's more stories to it. Okay. So we're, we hit the end of um, the springtime. I really wish, you know, we had one more week to tell a lot of these stories. But when we talk about storytelling, winter is the time of storytelling, okay? So let me go to this. So that's what this looks like. See, look, this is the, the birth of Changing Woman, Hope, the birth of the twins, the guardians of Sun Bear, the eradication of the monsters, the education of the monsters. See? The hero twin story, when we talk about it, it's so much more, okay? If you want to take a screenshot, that's okay. You can hit, if you have a laptop, hit um, print screen. There's a button, I think it's F11 or something. If you have a Mac, control shift three, okay? And so when we talk about Nayetna, it's going to talk about just chin, it's a really big story, okay? We're going to talk about just this portion right here right here the, uh, the journey right here okay i'm gonna do it as quick as i can the journey of the twins to their father that's what i want to talk about here okay so here's the eight monsters that they faced there's eight eight of them the first one was cliff swallows the cutting reeds the catching cactus the moving sands the canyon the wash the clashing canyon and then the mountain path okay so let's go talk about it. so when they were born, there were all these monsters everywhere. Right here is Yeitso, the main giant. He had a big helmet and all these feathers. And he carried a large knife and a club. 
there was gray giant, there was black giant, yellow giant, blue giant. Here's Del Gade, the horn monster. You have the man that kicks you off the cliff. There's the two monster birds. Some say they look like an, a giant eagle. Then there's others that say like a pterodactyl. Okay. Then there was the monsters that kill with their eyes. They have big eyes and then you look at them, they kill you with them. And so the two little boys, to keep them safe, they put them in a hole in the ground and they kept them in the ground so that those, these monsters wouldn't, get, wouldn't take them, okay? So this is that Hogan. See that little Hogan right here, the old time Hogan? Inside the Hogan, they put them in a hole to, 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 to grow up in, okay? So the monsters wouldn't get them. So the first monster that they faced this is a story for little kids, okay? You little ones. When mom says you can't, how many of you guys have a curfew? Give me a thumbs up if you have a curfew. Who has a curfew, especially if you live like in, 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 um, in, yeah, see, there's two of you right there. Some of you parents, there's a curfew, right? I know the other presenter before she was saying back then, long time ago, well, back then for us was when the light, when the sun went to sleep, we all had to come running home, okay? So, there's boundaries too. Your mom or dad or grandma might tell you, you can't play over there, you can't go over there, you can't be over here, don't go beyond the hill, don't go over there, right? There's a lot of rules when parents give you stuff, right? So, the two twins, they, they kept pushing their mom, they kept testing them. Some of you little kids do that, huh? You test mom, you test the teacher, you make sure like if the teacher tells you, you guys can only play over here, not over there. But then you want to, you want to try over there. You want to try to sneak away. You see the teacher look the other way and then you run off over there or you try to hide in the cool spot where teachers don't see you, whatever it is, right? So you try to test those boundaries. Now, the twins did that. Their mom was busy working. And so the two twins took off over the hill and they started playing in the ditch. Eventually, they got to a place where they, they lost track of time. They didn't know where they're at. And the gray giant picked up, um, took one of the boys. This is gray giant. And he picked up the young little boy and went back with him. The other little brother just ran off and he was crying. He's crying, right? He's saying, oh, somebody stole my little brother. Oh, my little brother's going to get eaten, my brother. Right? <clears throat> and he felt bad. And then he, he finally gained some, some courage and he tried to go towards, he, he tried to look where he was at. So he hid behind this rock. And he saw the big giant build a fire. He started seeing him warm up the water to make a stew out of him. And so the hero, the little twin, the little brother was sitting there crying, crying away, crying. Oh, I'm going to lose my brother, right? And so Horn Toad heard him crying. Horn Toad came up to him and said, So, grandchild, why are you crying? The little brother said, we didn't listen to my mom. We took off and now the giant's taking my brother and he's going to get eaten. So Horn Toad already knew this, right? Horn Toad says, I'll help you, but you have to listen to us. And so Horn Toad says, put on my armor, put on my helmet. And you're going to walk to the giant. When he sees you, he's going to get scared of me, of, of my armor on you. And he's going to, and once he lets go of your brother, get your brother back, okay? So the little twin, the little brother said, okay. So he put on the armor so you can see that. See how that, that blue jagged armor? And then he took Horn Toad's helmet and put it on him. And he started walking to the giant and the giant didn't, the, the giant wasn't looking. And so the little brother started yelling. Woo, hoi, hoi, right? Started doing his little war cries. The giant saw him, saw this, 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 this thing, this monstrous looking thing in this armor. And the way armor sounds, it sounds like metal was hitting metal. Okay. And giant looked at him and saw it. 
He started getting scared. He dropped the little, he dropped the brother. He started to cry. He started to cower. And that's when the brother started jogging. And that armor, sound of armor started to make even more sound. The giant got so scared, he fell to the ground. He's trying to crawl towards the edge. And he falls off the edge of the mesa and he almost dies and he's on the bottom. Okay. The twin gets his brother back and, and, and they start to, you know, get happy. And Horn Toad says, You two, listen. Both of you listen now to your parents. When they tell you and they make rules for you, you listen the first time. Okay. If you don't listen, you're going to get taken. You're going to get hurt. What happens if you're crawling around the mesas and you didn't tell mom, you take off and you trip? There's so many things that can happen, right? And so this tells us that story of staying within listening to those rules because we make rules for you for a reason, okay? And so there's a song with this that we sing. So there's a song that talks about this, okay? And so that's that story, okay? So listen to your parents, and they may be tough rules. Listen to your teachers. They may seem, right now as a kid, you may think, I hate them, all right? And you make that ugly face. Look at my face. And you go, see, as a Aurelia. See, she does that really good, huh? She goes, see, move on. Next one, okay. So the twins, one of the previous teacher, I don't remember who she was, the presenter. I didn't remember, I didn't catch her name. She said, priorities. What's your priority? All of you right now that are in school, your main priority when you're in school is school, right? But we lose track of that sometimes. There's all these things. Some of you guys are dealing with low grades. Some of you guys are dealing with maybe little bits of depression, anxiety, discouragement. You're unmotivated. Well, what's happening? So the two twins... They went to their mom and said, who's our dad? That's their priority. Their priority was to go get the weapons and armor from their dad. Not to meet their dad, but to get those things from them. Okay. So the changing woman, their mom said, I don't know who your dad is. She said, they asked again, who's our dad? I don't know who he is. He's that rock over there. Your dad's over there. Oh, your dad took off a long time ago. See, she's making excuses. And so... Finally, she says, your dad's the sun. So when you look outside, see right now, the sun's over here for me. That's your father, okay? Now, they decided, let's go on this trip to go see him. We're going to go see him and get these weapons and tools so that we can help eradicate these monsters that are living here. And so they started walking, walking. They started walking. Maybe two, three days, they came upon this first monster. This is Cliff Swallow. It's a bird, okay? This bird flew up, one of them, and it was flying around. Remember, tweet, tweet, it's going all around. Then another bird came up. Now there's two of them, and they're flying in this really nice pattern. They're going all over the place. Look, they're mesmerizing you. Like, ooh, look at this. Mariah, look over here. No, over here. Aurelia, look over here. Antoine, where'd you go? Look over here. See, you're going on. Ah, there you come back. See, there look. Then three came up. Then four. Then five. Eventually, there was a whole um, group of this these birds. And these two boys were so mesmerized by it. They start up walking. They're so happy to see all of these birds fly in this beautiful pattern. Left, right, up, and down. Back to the right, to the left. And they started walking. They forgot where they were at. Okay. Now, there was something right here in your stomach. Pet your stomach really quick. Right here in your tummy. When you're going to do something bad, what happens? 
or when you get in trouble, what happens? There's something right here, your gut feeling, right here in your mind, your consciousness, right? Some of you guys that have earphones on, this is your conscience speaking. Pamela, don't do it. Don't do it. You're going to get in trouble. Pamela, stop it. Right? You hear those little voices. Mariah, no more. Mariah, your mom's going to get mad at you. Your grandma's going to get mad at you. See? You hear those voices, right? And so that voice came up to them and said, stop. Look out. And the two boys stopped and they looked down. Right where they stopped, they looked down and there was a cliff. Those birds almost led them off the edge of a cliff. Okay? Now, how do we use that every day for you guys? Who else is a little... Pro Michael, is it okay if I pick on you as an example? And it looks like you're an adult. Can I use your name, Michael? Is it Mr. Jones? I think he took off. How about you, Miss Miss Mead? Is it Miss Mead, Mrs. Mead? Okay, Miss Mead. I'm gonna use the example. Okay, so Miss Mead, when you were a child, was there a time when somebody said, "Hey, Pamela, hi, Pam, let's go do this. Try smoking this. Try drinking this. Try this out. Don't worry, you're not gonna get in trouble." No, no, don't worry about it. Nothing's going to happen to you. I'm right here. I'm watching over you. And with you little kids, right, when you're on the bus, somebody passes you a note, somebody passes. Well, you guys don't have notes no more, huh? You guys are all digital. You guys all have phones. You're texting, right? Your phone starts to go ding, ding. And somebody says, Pamela, try this out. Pamela, come over here. They're distracting you. People are going to do that to you, Antoine, huh? Your buddies and be like, hey, go, come here. It's over here. Let's try this out. And then they're going to say like, hey, try drinking this. Mm, look. Ah, try this out. That's what we call peer pressure, okay? Now, peer pressure doesn't always happen from your friends. Because sometimes it might be from your family members. Maybe your older cousin brother, your older cousin sister might say, Hey, try some skull. Here, here's a cigarette. Try it out. Just try it really quick. They're irresponsible and they try to have you try those things, right? Now, if you succumb to peer pressure, if you let it overcome you, it's going to take you away. Just like those cliff swallows, they almost led those boys off the cliff to their death, right? There is people out there, they get in trouble. They get taken to jail because somebody offered them. Somebody told them to do something. Some of you guys might have bad grades right now because of this. Hey, Pamela, get on. It's me. Jump on, go on Call of Duty right now. Get on PUBG. Get on Minecraft right now. Let's go. They're texting you. They're messaging you. Hey, did you watch this YouTube video? See, already there's that monster that's taking you away. They're pulling you away. Now, what's your priority? You got to remember that, okay? Next monster. Oh, so finally, if you can overcome peer pressure, if you can say to your friends, you know what? I can't do that. My mom says it's bad. You might get laughed at. They might bully you for it, but you're going to be a better person for it. Now, they came to, a, they, they kept walking, they kept walking, they kept walking. And they came upon smoke coming out of the ground and they saw in that hole in the ground, their grandma spider was sitting there. And she, she said, come on in. And she gave them two feathers. She gave them teachings. She gave them prayers and songs. Okay. And then she said, you're going to learn these prayers. You're going to learn these songs. You're going to learn everything we're going to give you in school. When you learn these things, when you learn 4X plus 5 equals 7, you're going to understand and be a better person for it, okay? You're, we're giving you these weapons and tools, okay? Sometimes you might not see, I don't want to learn math. Math is stupid, right? But then how do you build a house? It's all math. Building a house, 
Oh man, there's so much math and I'm building a hogan right now outside my house. There's so much. There's area, perimeter, angles, all of those things. Wait, there's so much geometry in it, okay? So we are going to give you these life feathers, right? When you get your little promotion, when you, when you get promoted, there's that little paper, right? Or when you graduate, you get your diploma, your certificate, whatever it may be. That's going to be your weapon, your tool, okay? Now, the hero twins, the twins, they kept walking. And they kept walking and walking, and soon they came upon a cactus. Now, this cactus, I'm going to ask you guys, would you hug a cactus? Okay, so you want to hug a cactus. Would you run and jump into a cactus? So, if that's the case, imagine this is a can of beer. Why do people drink this now? Because on it, there's a warning sign that says, do not drink if you're pregnant in the state of California. This may cause issues or whatnot, right? We know it's dangerous. We know if you look at a knife, look right here. This is my work knife, okay? This is not just a random knife. This is my work knife. We know this is sharp, right? We know this can cut you. It's a razor. So why do people play with knives and whatnot? If you if there's a gun right here, you know that gun can hurt a person, can kill a person. Why would you play with it? If you look at cigarettes, you know it causes cancer. You know it causes addiction. You know these things, right? It's dangerous. So why do you continue to pick it up? Because look, it has a warning sign. Do you see this warning sign? The skull and bones? Ye bought it. Grandma, grandpa say that to you. Ye! But then this is you. I know it's okay. I can handle it. I'm an adult. I'm a big kid. I can, don't worry. I only drink in moderation. I'm only, uh, it's okay. It's my life. Leave me alone. Right? If these things are dangerous. Okay. Now the hero twins, they walked up to this cactus and they said, cactus, we know you're dangerous. And Cactus says, the reason why I have these, these things, because people disrespect me, okay? Think about tobacco. We use mountain smoke to pray with, right? We use tobacco in our ceremonies to pray with. But then you see people that are abusing um, cigarettes. Over here, they're on a pack a day. Maybe they're on three packs. They disrespect it, okay? So I'm not saying... You know, don't, don't, you can try it, but respect them, okay? Let's go to the next one, the next monster. The next monster was these reeds. If you've ever gone to a lake, they're like, they look like bamboo all around the lake, okay? The twins walked up to that lake and they stood behind. That little voice in their head said, stop right here, watch what happens. And so there's a little deer. Do you see this little deer right here? There's a little deer drinking water. So this deer walked up to it. It looked around. If you've ever seen a deer, they look around like this all the time. Their heads, then their ears. They're really cautious animals, okay? And so they, the, the deer came to the lake. Nothing happened. And the twins were watching. The two little boys were watching from behind a rock. And the deer started to look, started to drink a little bit of water, came back up, looked around, make sure there's nothing was going to eat it. It was really cautious. Then it started to drink more water again. Looked around, nothing. And it drank some water. Right when it looked up, that's when those bamboo, the reed, the leaves of, the, of, the, of that reed turned into knives and it cut up that deer instantly. Now, how can you use this in your life? There are dangerous things out there. They wait for you to come to them. Okay? There are some dangerous things. And they'll tell you, Shh, don't tell anyone. This is our secret. They make you feel comfortable. They might give you candy. They might give you toys. But you know in your, in your heart, in your mind, in your body says, no, this is bad. This is wrong. And then it takes you. Okay? So there's a lot of different things here. Your parents, your grandparents, your teachers can talk to you more about dangerous things like this.
okay they don't take you look at this it doesn't even look dangerous right this monster even if you're cautious that deer looked around and made sure there was no monsters there was no wolf there was no there was no mountain lion it really was super safe but then this monster took them okay so ask your teachers and mom there's there's monsters out there they wait for you they make you feel safe they make you feel loved they make you feel wanted let me give you an example like a gang member okay i know gangs is a, is a big deal they make you feel like family. They make you feel wanted. They make you feel loved. They make you feel like you're part of a family, right? They even give you money. They might give you soda, candy. They give you things. But eventually they take you, okay? So that's that monster. So be careful. The next one, this right here is the sand dunes. So if you've ever seen sand dunes like the Sahara Desert, the Gobi Desert, if you've ever been to White Sands, New Mexico, and saw those sand dunes, that's what I'm talking about, okay? Or if you've gone to Chinli, all those sand dunes everywhere. <laughs> it's getting to be a really quick desert. Now, the hero twins started walking, and they walked and walked and walked. Then they came upon these sand dunes, okay? And they looked at the sand dunes and they're like, where's this monster at? Where's it at? I can't see it. And their gut feeling right here told them, don't go over it. This monster is waiting for you. They couldn't see it. They looked to the right for miles upon miles, nothing. They looked to the left, miles and miles, nothing. They looked, they tried to look over the sand dunes. They couldn't see nothing. This monster is waiting for you, okay? Got to be careful. And so the hero twins felt overwhelmed. How many of you guys right now feel overwhelmed? You feel like it can't, you can't do it. You're not motivated. You feel like you, give, you want to give up. You just want to cry. You just want to be mad and angry, right? We feel that way. That's human. That's, that's what it means to be a person, okay? Now, can you, when you're looking at this monster, most people, if they don't learn how to overcome a monster, they just cry. They just sit there. They feel all alone. Okay. Now, the hero twins got their feathers right here. They held their feathers right here, right by their heart. And the feathers started moving. Okay. The feathers started dancing. And they were told, don't let go of it. And then the feather took them up. It lifted them over the sand dunes. They started to fly like Superman, Iron Man over the sand dunes. And when they looked under and down, they can see the sand dune monster trying to jump up at them, trying to catch them, trying to bring them down, but they flew over the sand dunes. Okay? Remember our teachings. Right now, these teachers, everybody presented to you the good stuff, right? When they say, they said, when you get stressed, breathe. Remember these teachings. And so the sand dune monster tried to get them, and the hero twins flew over the sand dunes, and they got to the other side, okay? And they saved them. Remember these teachings. Remember, you remember. All, so how about one for singing for me i like to sing so when i'm feeling mad angry or sad i always step away okay then i start to sing and so that's what i do learn figure out what you do when you get angry mad sad depressed okay all right the next monster so right in front of them there's a crack in the ground a crevice when they looked to the right, it went on for miles and miles. They couldn't go to the right. They looked to the left again, and it kept going to the left, miles and miles. And, they, and their gut feeling said, stop, don't jump over it. Don't do anything, just wait. And they saw another deer walk up to the, to the crevice. The deer jumped over. And before the deer landed on the ground, that crevice turned into a canyon. And the poor deer fell to its death all the way down there. Okay. Now, for kids, what might this be? I know elementary kids don't have these, 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 these things just yet. But as you go into middle school, addictions, sometimes 
when you feel mad or sad, some people like to eat hot Cheetos candy right here. Look beside me. I always use an example. When people feel mad, angry, sad, let's go have some. Dang, where's my chips at? Dang, let's go. Mmm, chips. Oh, man. Mm, mm, mm. Right here, right? Hot Cheetos. Dang, give me a soda pop. Mmm. Ah. Dang, where's my candy at? Valentine's Day. Man, look at all this candy right here. <clears throat> oh, man, that, that chips is old. I don't eat hot Cheetos very often, but that chips is old. I think I've had that since last year, so that's crazy. This is here since last year, October, and it's still, oh, my God. I can't believe I ate that. I think I'm going to get sick right now. We'll see what happens. But addictions, okay, they start early. Some of you guys, when you're angry, you, you go straight to this. Right here, look at your phones, right? Some of you guys go straight to your phones and you're on here on Facebook, Instagram, you're on Snapchat, you're on TikTok. Hours and hours of your day spent on this. That's an addiction. It gets to the point where you never leave this at home. See, Mariah's like, mm -hmm, that's you right there, huh? Is she shaking her head? I think so, Mariah. I see you. Hi. She's like, that's you, mom. Mm -hmm. You don't go anywhere without your phone, see? Some people, it's soda, okay? I remember there was a time in my life when I would drink a whole 12-pack to myself. I would, And now, that, that now I don't do that no more. <laughs> they told me I was almost pre-diabetic, but that's an addiction, see? For me, I feel better when I drink this. For some people, it might be tobacco. It might be alcohol, okay? So how do you get over it? You need somebody to help you. So with smoking, tobacco worm help the twins. We need to respect these things. Sugar, we need to respect it. We need to respect these foods. We need to have them in moderation. Okay. If we don't, then we then we then we get hurt by it. The next one, the clashing canyons. So the hero twins overcame that monster and they kept walking. They came upon this canyon and they looked at the mouth of the canyon. They said they had to walk through it. Okay. Their gut feeling, their, 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 their consciousness said that there's no way around it. There's no way under it. There's no way to the left. There's no way over it. You have to walk through this. Okay. And the hero twin said, if we walk through it, this canyon's going to crush us. It's going to smash, smush us. Okay. And the hero twins and their gut feeling said to them, Trust in your prayers. Trust that those feathers you have, if it's eagle feathers, if it's peyote feather, peyote fans, if it's your Bible, whatever it is, trust in your belief system. Okay? Have a set of belief system. A belief system makes you a better person. Okay? And so the two twins, they started to sing this song. And so the hero, the twins held their feathers, and as they walked through the canyon, rocks started to fall around them. The canyon started to move. It started to scare them, but the twins kept singing. Yo, it's going to sun up in a yaja kana shenda say go la na ya a ya shabet kasha kali ya ya johana na epich and the yo wo wa go la They kept singing, they kept singing. Okay. Then right when they were getting to the end of the canyon, the canyon closed on them. But when the canyon opened back up, all that rock around them crumbled and they were standing there. They didn't get harmed. They didn't get hurt. Now, how can you use this in your life right now? Right now, we're in a time of COVID, right? Look at this. This is not the ideal setting. I wish I was in person to see every one of your little faces, but we can't, right? The other thing too is 
there are some of your parents, some of your brothers, sisters, they have to work. They have to be, they have to do, they have to be around people. They might get sick. Some of you guys probably have gotten sick. Family members have gotten sick and it's because they have to work. But if you trust in your mask and you know how to use it, remember you're supposed to wash your hands antibacterial soap every time you touch something if you're still wearing a mask but you touch the door you touch the books you touch the tables but then you're going like this to your eyes and then your nose and then you're and if or if you're over here wearing your mask like this how's this gonna help you right you see people wear it you see people just put it around their neck you're supposed to wear it properly right and then when you're done with it, you throw it away. You don't reuse it, okay? You trust in the people that are making these decisions that they're keeping us safe, okay? You can go through Walmart. There might be sick people. And you come back out, you disinfect, you put hand sanitizer on your hand, your arms, you, you take off your mask, you put it in a trash bag, you throw that in the trash, you're going to be okay. You follow procedures, okay? Same thing with nurses and doctors. Nurses and doctors know how to defeat this monster. Very few doctors and nurses get sick because they know how to protect themselves, okay? So remember that. Let's go move forward. I'm almost out of time. There's one, two more. There's this. There's a wash. So the twins started walking, and now while they're walking, there's all these rain clouds all around them. It's raining way over there in the distance, raining way over here. And then they came upon a wash, a wash is an arroyo where water goes through every now and then, right? And it's dry most of the time. You guys, some of you guys live in Pinion. There's a lot of washes everywhere. When it rains upstream really hard, that water fills up really fast and goes down, right? So the hero twins, they, st they stood there and their gut feeling told them, wait, don't go just yet. And they heard a rumble up the stream. They saw this water, all of this water. They saw different animals, sticks, rocks, branches, trees, all of this debris came down. There was even people yelling for help, help me. But the hero twins stood there. Now, there's some people you can't help sometimes. And if you try to help them, they bring you in with them and you get lost and you get taken down sometimes. Okay. Now, there are teams of professional people that you go to. They know how to do their jobs to help those people in, in that situation. Okay. There, there, there's people that know how to go into rivers. They know how to 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 swim down the river safely and rescue people okay so if you see somebody floating down don't try to help him say hey come over here i mean try and help as much as you can but don't get sucked in okay that's why we tell you if somebody if you see somebody bullying and you know you can't fight that bully you're not supposed to right we tell you who do you go to go to your teacher Go to a counselor if they're not listening because sometimes we don't listen. Even as teachers, we say, ah, he's such a sweet boy. He wouldn't do that, right? Then go to your bus driver. Go to your counselor. Go to the principal. Do what you need to do. If you see somebody that says, I'm going to kill myself. I don't want to be here. As a kid, as a student, you're not trained to help somebody just yet, okay? That's why you go to a counselor. Go to the school nurse. Go to the principal because we know how to help somebody that's in that position. Okay, so be careful when you go across those these rivers, these streams. Okay, let me go to one last one. I'm almost done here. Last one. Now the hero twins kept walking, walking, and they could smell the ocean. I don't know if any of you guys ever been to the ocean. When you get close enough, you can smell. The saltiness, the seaweed, all of that, they can smell. They see the ocean, but there's a big mountain in front of them. Now, there's two pathways, one to the right. See, it's real easy. It looks straight. 
One to the left looks like it goes around a mountain. It goes up across the river through a canyon. Then it goes over another mountain. It looks really hard, right? This is where we tell you, don't take the easy path in life. As Navajo people, traditional people, the easy path in life is, is not one you're going to learn from, okay? How about in a test? Here, let me give you the answers, right? Are you going to learn from it? No. You got to do the work. You got to show your work. You got to put in the time. You got to put in the hours. You got to do everything you need to do to succeed. Because the hero twins, the twins, they went the easy way. There was an old man standing here and he told them, grandchild, if you go the easy way, you're going to get old really fast. By the time you reach the end of the path, you're going to fall over and you're going to get so old. Magically, you might die if you don't listen to us. Turn around. Listen to me right here, Mr. Berlin. I know I'm some random man through the computer. You've never seen me. You probably never will ever see me again, but listen to me, okay? Linda, Linda, listen, listen, Linda, listen, okay? Listen to me. I'm telling you these secrets to life, okay? But if they didn't listen, these two boys, just like right now, some of you, your older brothers or sister, guess what they say to your mom and dad? I know. I know. I know, mom. Oh, I know, dad. And teachers, right? We tell you, do you guys have the assignment? Do you guys know what to do? We know. We're good. No one ever asks questions and then they take off and then they're at home. Oh my God, how would I do this? I should have asked the question. <gasps> I said, then anyways, so the twins, they kept walking, okay? And they started to notice they were getting older and they're like, man, look at us. I look cool, right? And so the twins, and then they came and kept walking. Then they came upon two older people again. And they said, grandchild, grandchildren, please listen to us. Turn around. Go back the other way. Listen, please. Antoine, don't do these things. Listen to us. Please don't do this. Right? We tell you that. Mr. Clement, he's laughing away, huh? But he look, his sign says, bring it on. No, listen to us. Don't do these things. She has a shirt. Wait, it's a net, right? But they didn't listen. They kept walking. Now they're noticing they're like big, tough men. Now they're getting wrinkles. They're starting to get gray hair. Then they came upon three elders again. And they said, oh, what do you guys want? Right? Because that, that's what kids say sometimes. What do you want? I already know everything. And they said, grandchildren, Aurea. Right? Is that Aurea? Listen, please listen to me. Don't do drugs, don't do alcohol, don't do these crazy things. You go to college, go to work, do what you need to do to be a good person. Nothing else. Don't be doing these crazy things, right? But then the twins didn't listen again. They just kept walking. And then they noticed they're hunching over. They fall to the ground. The path was just right there. The sea was just right there. And then this time, all four of those elders, their old age people said, you two laying on the ground right here. I take pity on you. We tried to tell you, don't do this, don't do that. Don't do this, don't go that way, don't do that. Leave your friends alone. That's not, see, all of these things we're telling you, right? And the two twins were lying on the ground, all old, like, help us. We're sorry. <gasps> we're sorry. Isn't that what you? What happens after you get spanked? <laughs> I'm sorry, mom. <laughs> <laughs> right? You start throwing up. My niece is laughing over here because she does that. Now, the old age people said, we're going to help you this one time. Okay? Mariah, I'm going to help you one time. That's it. You listen to me. After this, don't do this no more, okay? I'm going to help you one time. So the old age people, the old man, the old lady, they picked up the two boys. They started walking back, and there's a song with it again. 
It's saying I walk with old age. Okay. Every day we walk with old age. Some of you guys are like, I'm I'm just six years old. The Antoine's like, oh, I'm 13. I'm not old. But some of us look at this. We have gray hair. I have one gray white beard hair. Oh, I'm getting old, right? We walk with old age, and old age took the boys back and said, Now listen to us. Take this road, the hard one. And so the twins said, Okay, we're listening. So the twins went to the left. They ran, they started running. They ran up the mountain, they ran across the canyon, they swam across the river, they went over another mountain, and they ran out to the beach. And they're like, this wasn't even that hard. Really? All I had to do was three questions on the homework. Why did I procrastinate? Why? It was only three questions. It was only five. That wasn't so hard. Why am I doing this to myself, right? So those are the those are the monsters, okay? Now, this is probably what you feel like sometimes, huh? Aww. You're just crying. You're lost all alone. <sighs> right? Here's that wall. How do you get over that wall? Okay? I show, I, I told you. Let's go start off with the little uh, the little obstacle, okay? You learn to go over that little obstacle. Then you learn to go over another obstacle. See, it's a circle. It's a cylinder, right? Then it changes to, I don't remember what this was called, a beam, a B-E-A-M. It's still an obstacle, but it changed. It's no longer circular. It's, it has the, uh, it's, it's like a square, right? And then you overcome it. Now you come across this vertical beam, it's higher, but you overcome it. Eventually you get to the point where you can overcome those walls, okay? But I know a lot of times it's difficult living. Um, um, it's difficult living with some of these things, okay? Because as a kid, you don't have control over this sometimes. And adults always ask me, so Mr. Berlin, how can we help these kids? Well, as educators, working with the BIE or working with really any federal school, you are a mandated reporter, correct? Anytime you see a child in distress, by law, you report that situation. It may be uncomfortable. It may tear apart a family. But in the end, you did your job by law, okay? Now, kids, any of you, if this is happening, talk about it with somebody. That's what your school counselors are for, okay? So right here, look at this. Mommy, daddy broke up. That really hurts your heart because then you start to think, mom, dad don't love me, okay? Talk about it with somebody. Go to the counselor, okay? Right here, somebody's being tied down. They're angry. A bully is bullying you. Maybe you lost a grandparent. You lost somebody right here. Somebody, oh, this one's hard to talk about. Sexual abuse, sexual violence. You need to tell somebody, okay? Right here is addiction. Somebody can't let go of that alcohol. It's then right here, as you go into, into middle school, somebody might tell you you're not pretty enough. You're not handsome. You don't have the right amount of swag. You're not legit. You don't have... The newest Jordans, you don't have Yeezys, you're ugly because all you wear is Walmart clothes. This is a shirt from Walmart. I That's all I wear, Walmart shirts, okay? Right here, girls or your friends might talk behind your back about you. And then over here, drugs, marijuana, pills, heroin, alcohol, meth, all of these things, okay? They create these barriers. But right now as a kid, right now is the time to overcome it because if you don't overcome it now when you get to middle school it's gonna get worse when you get to high school it's gonna be even harder when you become an adult it's gonna be hard you're gonna be lost when you start to have children and you didn't fix your problem as a kid you're gonna do the same thing to your own children okay 
that's way off in the distance. Some of you guys that I'm a kid. I'm not thinking about babies. Good. So there's more. There's more. So here it is. Pray for yourself, okay? Learn how to pray for yourself. Ask your mom. Mom, how do I pray? It's sometimes a hard question to ask because your mom or dad might not know how. Learn to pray for yourself. Look, listen to this. Mother Earth, Father Sky, I'm your child. Help me today. I have a big test. I studied as best as I could. I studied really hard. Help me. Help, help, help me to help myself do my best job. Okay? See, that's real simple, right? You can end it with amen. You can say, However you want to pray for yourself. Learn to do that, okay? It's real easy. Remember, you are somebody's child. You are wanted. We love you. Your teachers, your staff, your mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, whoever they are around you, they love you. You are not discarded, okay? So you're still loved. You are a monster slayer. When we sing our songs and prayers, when we sing for you, you say, I'm monster slayer. Damn, act tough, puff out your chest, go like this. Say, no, yeah, Okay, you are you are you are a force to be reckoned with. Right here, you little children, you're not just children. You guys are heroes. You guys are strong. You're powerful. Okay. And then here's how we use this. There's a whole lot more other stuff. That's for later. Okay. That's what I'm going to end with. I know I kind of went over my time too. Um, but uh, again, I wish usually when I do this, it takes a little bit longer and um, it's difficult doing this over Zoom. But I hope you guys learned something. And that's really about it. Kat, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Berlin. That was amazing. And if um, you are, we do have the presentation that you did for our Diné Studies, uh, our Diné Stories Night. Um, so if anybody wants some more of this, we have some additional material that's out on the Pinyon Unified School District Facebook page. Oh, you have to go back to October and you'll be able to find that. Um, and we really, really appreciate your time with us today. And I know we, it's never enough. It seems like whenever I work, hear your presentations, I could have you all day long. So we'll definitely have you back. I really appreciate your help. Um, I want to make sure we give time to um, our closing speaker, Ariel Begay. She's going to talk about peer pressure, which now really puts in context from what Mr. Boleyn had said. And she put together a video for us. Um, so we're going to do that. A couple housekeeping things before we do this. The last letter of the secret mystery word is A. So if you've been keeping track all day long, um, you'll have the last letter as A. So you should have the whole word, two words. Um, we're gonna do one more quick spin of the wheel and then we're gonna go ahead and do our presentation um, from our Pinyon High School princess to close us out. Um, so here we go. We're gonna spin the wheel one more time. I got everybody in from Facebook and... <laughs> and close with our um, Pinyon High School princess um, who's going to do uh, her introduction and then I'm going to switch the video. She has a little presentation on peer pressure and then she has her closing remarks. So Ariel Begay from uh, Pinyon High School. Yeah, <laughs> My deskies ne bushes teen, key ani deshache, pots on a deshnella, a good egg as an initia, at an aha eda nasha, ado not that deal and a care winched it. She has tant a reshnahe, ado beg a bahozane a shinsta. 
Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, my name is Ariel Begay. I ring the title of Miss Penn High School to the year 2020 to the year 2021. Today, I'll be presenting you a short presentation on peer pressure, and I hope you like it. Thank you. Hello, so let's get started with this presentation, Peer Pressure, presented by Ariel Begay. What is peer pressure? Peer pressure is wanting to feel a part of something that can put pressure on you to act in a certain way. It can happen when we are influenced to do something we usually would not do. So, why is there peer pressure? Well, there are many other reasons that peer pressure is there, and one of them is to be accepted by others. So, there are two types of peer pressure. There is a, non a positive and a negative. Along with these, there is good influences and bad influences. Good peer pressure is when you're being pushed into something you didn't have the courage to do or just didn't cross your mind to do. It can lead you, it can lead you to surprise and interest we can benefit this by learning something new in ourselves. So it's sort of like a motivation that positive impact can give, give us. See like the little baby there says, don't worry, you got this. And there are influences like our friends that can give us feedback, that can try us new, that can make us try new ideas and explore new beliefs. They can make us have the right decisions and can give us some good advice along the way. It can let us overcome fear and avoiding us by getting hurt or in trouble. Negative impact. Negative peer pressure is when your friends persuade you to do something that maybe you don't want to do. It can lead you it can lead to consequences in the end like doing drugs or drinking alcohol. And the influences of these negative peers is that it can cause us to engage in risks. And maybe along the way, it can change our behavior in things that can get us distracted from schoolwork. And it can also lead sometimes to depression. It can also affect us by making poor decisions and it the outcomes. How do you respond to negative peer pressure? Well, to deal with them, you have to have self-confidence in yourself to take action, learning how to say no, to do what's right, always to do what's right. And there's something that I stress about is that people don't ask for help during these situations because sometimes they don't know if they're going to get in trouble. And But there's always someone that is willing to help you in the end. So please do not hesitate to get someone's help. Accept the good and face the bad. We don't take action. If we don't take action, we will be influenced by our peers to do something which is dangerous and unhealthy. With that said, make the right choices for yourself and your well-being. So know who your good peers and know who are your bad peers. Um, there's a little saying that there's a little there's a little quote at this very end of the presentation. It says. It is not hard to make decisions once you, you know what your values are. So with this quote, it's pretty self-explanatory once you really think about it. It's just make sure you write, make the right decisions to know what kind of person you are. Like what you, what's your worth into making these decisions. So always think about that. And thank you. Thank you for um listening to my little presentation and i hope you've all learned something before i go today i would like to give a big thanks to the presenters that presented today um also to the organizers that made this youth conference happen um especially to all the watchers that were watching we thank you for your support and to miss mead to Thank you for letting me present today. I had a lot of fun doing this. Um, I hope you guys all are staying safe and being smart with your choices and always stay positive. 
Um, thank you and have a great day. Thank you, Ariel. And again, I want to just echo the same. Thanks to all of our presenters and the watchers. It's been a long day for all of us. So thank you for joining us. I hope you had fun. Um, please take time to do the survey. Um, the link is in the chat box and also in the Facebook Live. Um, a few closing remarks. Um, Mr. Boleyn's um, Danae Winter Stories presentations will be available on the Facebook page for only another week um, uh, as winter will be ending. So we want to just make sure if you do want to watch a little bit more of that to definitely uh, take a look at that. Um, and a big thank you to all of our presenters today. As a reminder, it'll be on Facebook Live. We're also going to have a YouTube video. So if you want to go back and visit some of the sessions or you had to leave or you want to share it, um, we'll do that for you. Um, a big thank you to Pinyon Unified School District, to um, the Chinle, um Health Promotions Department for helping us with the funding to put this on uh, for them, and also to the um, Pinyon Health Center's counseling services who uh, additionally had some additional funding to help us for this today. So big thank you to everybody. You guys take care, have a good spring break. And as always, you can reach out to me if you have any questions. Good to see you all. Thank you. Thank you, Kyra. Bye, Mariah. Bye, Aurea. Good to see you guys, my Girl Scouts. Thanks, Antoine. You were super. Thanks, Miss Mike. Thanks, Jaquela. Thanks, Miss Shorthair, Ellery, Bernice. Thanks so much for being here. Brenda, Geraldine and family, Colleen and her family. Um, Keith, good to see you on here. Um, Dale and Andrea, uh, everybody on here. Ian and Ellery, my own kids. Maybe they felt like they had to be here, but thank you for being here anyway. And everybody have a good day. Thank you, Mr. Jo Sergeant Jones. Bye. Bye. Bye, Aria.